Hi everybody, Chris Bryant here, and I've got your CCNA two-minute tip of the day coming up here on the routing table. And in about 15 seconds, I'm going to have a live routing table up on the screen for you. We're going to spend a minute or two hitting some real high points that you need to know for your CCNA exam. Just a word about the routing table, too. It's definitely one of those topics that can really throw you the first time you see it. and You just throw your hands up and you go, great, more abbreviations. Believe me, I had the same reaction to it when I first saw it. But one thing to keep in mind about this, and let me start our two-minute timer here. One thing to keep in mind about the routing table to begin with is that you do not have to know every single one of these codes yet. And when you learn the fundamental codes, especially with OSPF, the other ones are going to fall into place. So don't be too hard on yourself with this and uh, try to memorize everything all at one time. C is for connected, S is for static. You know those. Those are the first two that we really learn in our studies. Remind me again what command is used to create the static route. That's the IP route command, right? If you're unfamiliar with that, a little rusty, or you haven't gotten to it yet, check out my YouTube channel for some free videos on that. Now, one thing I get asked very often, why is it that C is for connected, S is for static, R is for RIP, O is for OSPF, and D is for EIGRP? They didn't do this to make the exams tricky or anything like that. The problem was is that by the time EIGRP was created, EGP, the exterior gateway protocol, was already in the routing table. So while you don't have to know about EGP for your CCNA exams, you do need to know what that routing table code is because that is why D stands for EIGRP. Now looking at these OSPF codes, definitely a couple of values I want to share with you here. And we're just looking at this route in particular. Watch your IA here. That simply stands for enter area. Nothing tricky there, and that's just simply in another area. And let's see, these two values right here, we definitely want to spend a few seconds here with those two. The first value in that brackets is the administrative distance. That is the value of trustworthiness assigned to a protocol. You're certainly familiar with those, or you will be by the time you're done with your NA studies. And the OSPF AD is 110, no matter what kind of route, whether it's inter area or not. Uh, otherwise, the other value I wanted to show you is 65, and that 65 is the cost of that particular route. So whenever you see two numbers in these brackets, just keep in mind, the first number is going to be the AD, the second number is going to be the metric for that path, and in OSPF speak, we always call that the cost, that being 65. Hope you enjoyed today's tip of the day. If you've got an idea or something you'd like to see covered in one of these videos, or maybe even one of my longer ones, please send me a tweet, get a hold of me on the blog, especially on Facebook. Love to chat with you there. I'm Chris Bryant. Thanks for making TBA part of yours. Cisco Certification Success Story. Ah, shut up. Ha, ha, ha.